Beneath the surface of the northeastern Pacific Ocean, a slow and quiet transformation is underway. Nearly one and a half kilometers below the waves lies Axial Seamount, a broad submarine volcano positioned along the Juan de Fuca Ridge, about 400 kilometers west of the Oregon coast. It is a place that few people will ever see, yet it is one of the most closely observed volcanoes on the planet. Through cables, sensors and pressure monitors anchored to the seafloor, scientists have built a continuous record of its movements. The data form a kind of heartbeat for a mountain that breathes beneath the sea. For more than two decades, Axial has served as a natural laboratory for understanding how the Earth's crust behaves under pressure. Its structure is not a sharp cone, but a wide, shield-like formation, its summit marked by a caldera several kilometers across. Each eruption leaves a trace on the ocean floor, lava fields that cool into black glass, small ridges of fractured basalt, vents that release hot mineral-rich water supporting colonies of microbes and tube worms. Between eruptions, the volcano slowly reinflates as magma accumulates below, lifting the seafloor by measurable amounts. This rhythm of inflation and deflation has allowed researchers to study volcanic cycles in more detail here than anywhere else beneath the ocean. After its last eruption a decade ago, Axial began to reinflate, as expected. Instruments showed a gradual rise of the caldera floor, a predictable pattern consistent with the filling of a shallow magma chamber. The uplift continued steadily for several years, then began to level off. By all early measures, it appeared to be following the same pattern as before. But as the 2020s advanced, the trend began to diverge. Sensors now record the ground at the summit, rising at a rate approaching 10 inches per year, roughly 25 centimetres, about twice the speed observed in earlier cycles. Seismic instruments detect thousands of small earthquakes each day, some so weak they resemble faint cracks in glass, others strong enough to echo across the ridge. When researchers mapped the distribution of these quakes, they found that the pattern had shifted. Instead of clustering along the central fault system where magma is usually stored, many now occur farther outward in areas not previously associated with magma movement. The implication is that the pressure beneath the seafloor is spreading in new directions. This change has attracted attention because Axial Seamount is one of the few volcanoes where inflation can be measured with such precision. Every tilt of the crust and every small tremor is recorded. Over time, these observations have shown that magma accumulation here produces a distinctive signal, a slow, continuous uplift punctuated by brief pauses as the crust adjusts. The current record, however, shows a series of irregular jumps and sudden accelerations. Some of these shifts coincide with tidal cycles, suggesting that the gravitational pull of the moon and sun may be subtly influencing the flow of magma. Others do not align with any known external factor. To investigate further, research teams from several institutions have deployed autonomous instruments and remotely operated vehicles to the site. The seafloor, when illuminated by the lights of these vehicles, reveals a landscape of dark basalt broken by new cracks and fissures. Plumes of warm, shimmering water rise from vent fields carrying fine mineral particles into the surrounding darkness. In some locations, newly formed fractures release water several degrees hotter than in previous surveys, indicating that magma has moved closer to the surface. Yet, despite these signs of increased activity, there is no evidence that an eruption has already begun. The picture emerging from the data is complex. 
The volcano's magma chamber appears to be refilling from below, but the rate and direction of that influx are not constant. The simplest explanation, steady injection of magma from a fixed source, no longer fits. Instead, models now suggest that the chamber may be connected to deeper zones of molten rock, possibly linking to reservoirs several kilometers beneath the crust. These connections could allow magma to flow upward in pulses rather than as a smooth, continuous stream. Each pulse would momentarily increase pressure, fracture the surrounding rock, and then subside until the next pulse arrives. The consequence is a seamount that does not behave like a simple elastic balloon, but more like a complex network of cavities and conduits. Pressure in one part of the system can relieve stress in another, creating localized shifts that appear irregular when viewed from above. Understanding these shifts requires combining several types of data, seismicity, pressure, heat flow, and chemical composition of the vent fluids. Together, they suggest that Axial's plumbing system is evolving in real time. This realization has prompted scientists to ask what such evolution might mean. If the internal pathways of the volcano are changing, can previous eruption forecasts still hold? The eruptions of 1998, 2011, and 2015 all followed a broadly similar pattern of inflation followed by collapse. Each event relieved pressure and reset the cycle. The current inflation, however, is occurring more rapidly and with a different distribution of strain. The deformation is strongest not at the center but around the flanks of the caldera hinting that magma may be migrating toward new fractures. Should these fractures connect all the way to the surface, they could provide a new route for eruption. For now, Axial remains silent, its signals confined to the instruments that monitor it. The data reach shore through fiber-optic cables that run across the seafloor to coastal stations. In laboratories, scientists translate the raw numbers into three-dimensional models, tracing how the seamount slowly changes shape. The results are reviewed daily, each new measurement compared to decades of previous records. The patterns are both familiar and unsettlingly different. The rise and fall of the volcano continues, but the rhythm has shifted slightly off-beat. To those studying it, this shift is a reminder that even with all our technology, much of the deep ocean remains beyond direct observation. The forces driving Axial's activity operate out of sight, in darkness and immense pressure, in rock that has never been touched. When data appear that do not fit expectations, Scientists must decide whether the anomaly signals something new or simply a variation of something known. At Axial, the line between those two interpretations has grown increasingly thin. The focus now is not only on whether the volcano will erupt soon, but on what its changing behavior might reveal about the way magma systems adapt over time. The swelling may indicate that the crust beneath the ridge is weakening, allowing magma to accumulate more freely than before. Alternatively, it could suggest that a deeper reservoir, previously sealed, has reconnected to the upper chamber. Both possibilities carry implications for how submarine volcanoes contribute to the formation of new oceanic crust and how heat and chemicals are transferred to the surrounding water. While the details are technical, the broader story is straightforward. Axial seamount is growing in a way that challenges prior assumptions. Its inflation is faster, its seismicity more diffuse, and its internal structure more dynamic than models predicted. What this means is still uncertain. For scientists, uncertainty is not failure, but invitation. Each new piece of data adds a fragment 
to the larger picture of how the planet renews itself from within. As months pass, research vessels continue to visit the site, retrieving instruments and deploying replacements designed to survive the harsh environment. The data they collect feed into global databases, where patterns are compared with other submarine volcanoes. Few show the same degree of swelling or the same dense web of micro-earthquakes. In this respect, Axial appears unique, an outlier that may be teaching us something fundamental about how volcanoes operate under the ocean's pressure. In the coming years, the question will not simply be when Axial might erupt, but how? Will it release lava quietly along its rift zones, forming new flows across the seafloor, or will the process take an unexpected turn, involving deeper connections and more complex exchanges between magma and water? The answers lie hidden beneath more than a kilometre of seawater, in a place where direct observation remains almost impossible. For the scientists monitoring it, Axial Seamount represents both a risk and an opportunity. It could, within a short span of time, demonstrate a new type of eruption behaviour that helps refine predictive models for similar settings around the world. Or it could remain in a prolonged state of inflation, a reminder that not every build-up leads to an eruption. In either case, the ongoing swelling marks a pivotal moment in the study of submarine volcanism an unfolding chapter that continues to draw researchers back to the dark ridge beneath the Pacific. In the months that followed the most recent surveys, new layers of information began to surface from the depths of Axial Seamount. Analysis of seismic data revealed a second deeper zone of molten material beneath the main chamber. This reservoir, situated roughly six kilometres, about four miles, below the sea floor, appeared to be feeding magma upward through narrow conduits that opened and closed in cycles lasting only days. The pattern was subtle but unmistakable, and it changed how scientists interpreted the volcano's behaviour. The swelling observed at the surface was not simply the product of a single pocket filling with magma. It was the visible effect of a much larger system operating at multiple depths. To confirm this, teams examined the chemistry of the fluids collected from hydrothermal vents around the caldera. The samples contained elevated levels of gases and metals that could only have come from freshly emplaced magma. This chemical fingerprint pointed to a new influx of material from the mantle a process that may have begun years earlier, gradually altering the composition and temperature of the entire system. The discovery was striking. It suggested that Axial's magma supply was connected to a deeper source than previously thought, one capable of sustaining activity far longer than a single eruptive cycle. As the models were refined, a clearer picture emerged. The volcano seemed to be entering a new phase of its geological life, one defined by more efficient circulation of heat and material between deep and shallow reservoirs. This coupling could explain why the deformation of the seafloor had become more erratic and why the earthquake patterns no longer followed their old rhythm. Instead of a simple pressure build-up leading to eruption, the process resembled a continuous exchange, a dynamic equilibrium maintained by subtle changes in flow. In this sense, the phenomenon described as beyond natural was not supernatural at all. It was nature operating with a complexity that human observation was only beginning to resolve. For scientists, the revelation carried a broader significance. If Axial Seamount could reorganize its internal structure within the span of a few decades, then similar systems elsewhere might also evolve in ways that make long-term forecasting more difficult. This insight could reshape how volcanic hazards are assessed, 
not only under the sea, but on land as well. The data collected here may become the foundation for a new generation of models that treat volcanoes as living systems, responsive, adaptive, and interconnected. The research continues. Each new measurement adds to the archive of one of Earth's most closely monitored volcanoes, a record that will help explain how the planet renews itself through cycles of creation and change. Whether Axial Seamount erupts soon or remains in quiet inflation, its story has already expanded our understanding of the deep processes that sustain the Earth's crust. If you found this exploration as fascinating as we did, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more science documentaries. And don't forget to tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience, so more people can witness how science continues to uncover the mysteries beneath our oceans.